everybody, welcome back. Um, if you're new here, my name is Claire and I'm a current doctoral occupational therapy student intern with CSC this semester. Um, I have previously recorded some videos about sleep management and energy conservation techniques. So if you haven't checked those out, go on back and listen to those. Today I'm gonna be talking about different adaptive tools and equipment that are useful for everyday activities. So let's first start with the kitchen. So here on this slide you can see what we have um, is called a rocker knife. So this is kind of, as you can see, a little rocker blade with a thicker built-up handle. Now this is going to be really useful for individuals who have arthritis or in general if you're just too fatigued and your muscles are just tired. Um, this is a safe alternative to continue cutting your vegetables, just using a rocking motion back and forth, as opposed to a big dangerous knife um, with a smaller handle requiring more energy and more force to grip it safely. So this gives you a safe alternative that requires less force um, with a thicker handle to ease the grip. So on this slide, what we have are various types of jar openers. I'm sure several of you are familiar with the center picture that has various sizes um, to use on different sized jars with smaller lids or larger lids. Super helpful if you guys have used this one before. Um, you can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. All of these things you can get at um, there, Walmart, CVS, Target, online at Amazon. I know everybody shops Amazon. That's got some great deals on there. Um, so feel free to do some research. But the center one is great. It's got that grippy material to help really give you um, just some strength so your hand doesn't slide off. Another one that I really like just because it's hidden and it's super easy to use is the picture on the left. Now this will mount from the bottom of your cabinets so you never see it. It's super convenient. It's always there. Um, and it kind of looks like a pie chart. So you can adjust the size depending on the size lid of the jar and you'll put it up and kind of slide it in towards the center and twist and it's super easy and it has some grippy teeth on there too to grab a hold of it so you're not spending time using both of your um, arms and bicep muscles to really jar that um, or open the jar. Another one we have on the right is electric tools. So I really highly recommend any sort of electric tools that you guys are interested in, but this is an electric can opener. Those are kind of usually on the more pricey side um, compared to the one in the center, obviously, but they're really not that expensive. It's just an alternative. It, claps, it um, clasps onto the sides of the jar with the little hinges. And depending on the type of electric jar opener you buy, some have buttons, some have little toggle switches, but those are super convenient. All of these things are again gonna allow for a safer way to open your jars, really, especially if you're feeling super fatigued and you don't have the energy to use those biceps or the grip within your hands is not that strong that day and you just don't have a lot of energy. These are super helpful time savers, energy savers, fatigue savers, overall life savers. All right, so here we have various electric tools within the kitchen. Probably the most common one to all of you is on the right. It's just an electric food processor. I know a lot of our recipes require so much time, energy um, to prepare our vegetables for our meals. Um, so the food processor is super easy. And that kind of goes along with the mechanism we have on the far left hand. It's a plastic bin that comes with different attachments. So if you are like me and don't like spending time cutting onions because I just start crying, um, or if you just have those days where you're super low on energy and fatigue like we've talked about, you're just your fatigue is high, you don't really want to spend the time cooking, so you can use these tools to save our energy. So when we use these tools, we're saving the energy that would be necessary to prepare the vegetables and we can use that saved energy to actually cook our meals, right? We don't want to get so fatigued to where we have no energy to even cook the meal. So definitely look at um, purchasing if you want to. Some tools such as the one on the far left, it comes with different attachments. So to chop vegetables, dice them, slice them, um, 
anything like that. It's super neat. It's probably around $20, $20 I think, $25 I've seen them for, but again, it just depends on where you're shopping from. Um, the one in the center, our family uses a ton just because we like to use a lot of garlic in our house and you can use it for other vegetables as you can see here um, or herbs depending on if you need to chop them, mince them, whatever. But electric garlic presses. I know a lot of people don't have that energy or muscles um, to really press the garlic using a garlic press. Even though the handles might be built up and thicker, it is a little bit easier to have thicker built up handles, but even then, just the force required by your body and muscles to really push that mechanism together, you can save that energy by purchasing an electric garlic press or electric garlic mincer. So think about that the next time you're cooking or shopping, looking for different tools. This is one that's a really simple step modification um, and piece of adaptive equipment that can really save time, energy, especially when you're um, having some extreme fatigue that day. All right, on this slide we have just two different types of cutting boards. Now, these are generally for people um, who have various sorts of disabilities or trouble cooking in general, um, so they're not as common. Um, but they do exist, so I did want to include this slide in here just to give you kind of all of your options. As you can see, the one on the left, it has two prongs where you can put a piece of fruit or vegetable and kind of stick it on the prongs to help keep it in place. And as you can see where the apple slices are, you have that kind of 90 degree angle with those walls. That again is also useful so things don't slide off the cutting board. Um, or if you're making a sandwich and you're only using one arm because you've injured the other arm, this will help keep the bread or anything you're using in place. And what we have on the right is pretty similar. It's just kind of modified, right? It's just a different version. Um, so what you have, you can still see the little prongs to help um, keep vegetables down, bread, whatever you might want to kind of stick on there. And then you can see she's slicing that cucumber with only one hand. So this is a kind of a fancy mechanism that you can um, pull out for larger vegetables or push in to really secure that cucumber or carrot or whatever you're cutting in there. So I would look into these if you find that you're having trouble with anything like that or if you've got an injured arm or hand or what have you. These are also out there so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay, so I know I kind of talked about cooking tips and tricks in our previous energy conservation technique video um, and kind of that educational series, but if you have not yet watched it, um, watch it, but if you haven't watched it yet or you just kind of want a refresher, I kind of put some information into this slide. So overall, you want to cook in bulk. Huge time saver, especially for those days where you're low on energy. Pull something out of the freezer that you've cooked, whether it's a big pot of chili, soup, fajitas, anything that you've done um, previously that you can pull out of the freezer super easy. So remember to find big recipes. I know smaller families never like to cook big meals because they can never finish it, but really think about that. If you're making a big pot of soup, you can save that for those days that you just don't feel like cooking. Um, another option is purchasing pre-cut vegetables. Now sometimes they can be on the little bit uh, more expensive side of things. However, if you do find that you don't have that energy or your arthritis is kind of acting up or you just don't want to prep the meal, right? We talked about we can save energy by not um, prepping the vegetables with just one knife. We talked about buying those tools, but also if you don't want to buy those tools, you can just purchase pre-cut vegetables. Save that energy for actually cooking the meal. Another one is leaving our heavy pots and pans on the stovetop. A lot of energy from our bodies is being used to bend down, grab those heavy pots, and lug them up on top of the stove. So if you're one of those um, people who really cooks a lot and has one or two pots that they frequently use that are a little bit heavy, put them on the back burner for whenever you need them. Then you can just grab them and put them on the front burner when you're cooking. Um, or you can invest in more lightweight cookware depending on your finances that's also an option 
Another one I want to encourage you all is to take advantage of frozen vegetables, right? We oftentimes overlook that because we always want the fresh stuff, which is really great also. But if you're making soup, stew, or other like slow cooker recipes, um, don't be afraid to take some frozen vegetables out of that freezer, right? Super helpful, time saver, and they're normally pre-cut. So that's another energy kind of saving technique that we can utilize. We talked about investing electric tools just for ease of meal preparation. Um, you can also prepare in advance, right? So if you're cooking a big soup, you can prepare your vegetables when you wake up the night before and then put them in a bowl with saran wrap and put them in the, freeze, in the fridge and pull them out for later. So don't forget that you can also prepare your meals in advance. That way you can take a break right before you're cooking your meal. So if I need to cut up a bunch of onions for my soup, I'll cut them up in the morning when I get up or the day before. Whenever you're really feeling up for it, just think, stop, take a break and say, hey, this might really be helpful for me for tonight when I know I'm going to be super tired. That way that energy you're saving can actually be put towards making the meal. We want to remember to pace ourselves, take those rest breaks before we're too tired, and ultimately work smarter, not harder. So take a look at all of those tools we talked about, different tips and tricks. Go back and listen to the energy conservation technique video to help you ultimately work smarter and not harder. All right, now we're going to be talking about dressing. So I'm not sure if many of you guys have heard of this, but there's a super handy dandy tool we call a sock aid. Now, as you can see, it's kind of a little plastic tube shaped mechanism and it has two handles attached with a rope. And you can see in the figure on the left how they thread the sock on. In the middle figure, they throw the mechanism down by their foot using those two ropes to hold on to. And on the right side, they slid their foot in and they pulled up on the handles, ultimately pulling their sock up. We really recommend these for individuals who find it too difficult or challenging to bend over to reach their feet. If we're too tired that day, just the thought of bending over, spending time bent over to put on your socks is very challenging, requires a lot of energy from your body, and then when you get back up, you might be out of breath or just feel very fatigued. So sock aids are a great tool to use. All right, to go along with that sock aid, we have a long-handled shoehorn. I'm sure many of you are familiar with a regular shoehorn. This is the same idea, it just has a longer handle. This way, again, you're not bending over quite as far to put those shoes on. So it can really just help you kind of lean to the side slightly, bend slightly, and help get those shoes on. Another helpful tool that we find um, individuals utilize frequently is a reacher. I'm sure many of you have seen these, um, but if not, the figure on the left kind of shows what it's all about. There's a little trigger on the left end of it, and on the right, it's a little hook. And if you pull the trigger, it comes together at the top to grasp something. So people use this to pick up their keys, their tissues, as you can see in the figure on the right, a glasses case. Um, but uh, they're mostly utilized if you experience an injury or if you have back issues, but ultimately saving you that energy, time, and force required from your body to bend over and pick something up. And the last kind of tip and trick for dressing is what we call a long-handled sponge. Now I know this might seem silly, but you'd be amazed at what this long-handled sponge can do for your energy and fatigue, as well as just overall range of motion, right? So if you're somebody who has shoulder issues or you find that reaching just above your head to scrub your back or um, bring your hands and arms behind your back to scrub or reach down to your feet and legs, you'll find how useful this long-handled sponge is. So I really encourage you to utilize that overall energy saver, time saver, and it feels good, right? Everyone likes a little back rub or back scratch while they're in the shower. So um, consider that super useful. So now for some dressing tips and tricks. Um, the first one is sit down. I know we've previously talked about this in another video, but just remembering Grab all of your clothes at once and sit down to get dressed, right? That way you're not having to use energy to really um, focus on your balance while you're standing to put a sock on or put your legs through your pant holes. Sit down, conserve energy. 
which leads into the second one, grabbing all of our dressing clothing at once prior to sitting down. So instead of going to grab your socks, coming back, sitting down, standing up, going back to the closet, grab your top, coming back, putting it on, making all of those trips, grab everything at once, then come and take a seat. Another one we can um, utilize is using a stool to elevate your foot. So if you are one of those individuals who doesn't like bending down to the floor, or they don't have the range of motion or what have you, use a stool, elevate your foot, um, and it'll really help ease that stress on your back and every other muscle in your body to put your socks and shoes on. Keep hygiene products in the bathroom all within your reach. So your toothbrush, your makeup, your comb, anything like that. Try to keep it within your reach. That way you're not reaching out of your little base of support um, to reach things and lose your balance. Ultimately, if you're reaching far up, wide, out to the side, your body is going to utilize way more energy to keep you stable and balanced so you don't fall over. So if you keep everything within reach on your countertop or in the shower, it's just a big energy saver. And I also wanna reiterate the importance of pacing ourselves, take those rest breaks, work smarter, not harder. This whole um, presentation was about kind of introducing you all to these tools and tips and tricks to help your lifestyle, um, just modifying your lifestyle and create an ease due to high fatigue or low energy levels. So thanks for listening. Stay tuned for more.